Hello, welcome back to another video. It has been a while, but I'm trying to get more on track of doing these at least once a week because I already have another um, idea for a video lined up for next week, hopefully. As long as I can get all my research in on this person that I want to do next week. Um, but yeah, welcome to my YouTube channel. I like to do videos on silent film actors and actresses and also people that were on the Titanic. So next week is probably going to be someone on the Titanic since we're doing a silent film star this week. So you may not know the actress or her films, but you do know the stills that still survive of her. So today we will be talking about Theta Bera. So who is Theta Bera? Well, she is often cited as the first sex symbol and she was typecast into the vamp. Theodosia Goodman was born on July 29th, 1885 in Cincinnati, Ohio. So I was interested in doing a video on her, not only because she led an extraordinary life, but because I love finding other actors and actresses that are actually born or raised in my home state. Her father was named Bernard Goodman and he was a prosperous Jewish tailor from Poland. Her mother was named Pauline Louise de Copet and she was born in Switzerland. And she also had younger siblings, a brother named Mark and a sister named Esther but her sister also would become a film star as well and, and she would go by the name of Lori Barra. Theodosia would attend Walnut Hills High School and graduated in 1903. She then would attend the University of Cincinnati for two years before working mainly in theater, but she did explore other projects. In 1908, Theodosia moved to New York City where she made her Broadway debut in The Devil and she lived there with her family at that time. Bauer's early films were shot at Fox Studios in Fort Lee, New Jersey where the film industry was centered at that time. She kind of just did a lot of like extra work for, or you know was an extra in a lot of the films um, before her first film which was A Fool There Was and it was directed by Frank Powell in 1915. It was based on the 1909 Broadway production of the same name by Porter Emerson Brown. The movie also gets its title from a poem by Rudyard Kipling called The Vampire and it uses a lot of quotes from the poem in the movie. Now this movie you can actually watch on YouTube. So if you want if you're interested to know what the movie is about, you can just search for it on YouTube and it'll be up there. Barr's first starring role and the film's success built her fortune and secured the future for producer William Fox and Fox Film Corporation. The movie is about John Schuller, who is a wealthy businessman who is living the ideal family life with his wife and daughter until he runs across the vampire, played by Vera, <laughs> who has exhausted her last victim and is looking for her next meal. She ends up booking the same passage as John and she seduces him and completely ruins his life. The movie is supposedly responsible for taking the word vampire and shortening it to vamp and popularizing that word for a sexually manipulative woman. This is also when she would be Hollywood's first man-made star. They claim that she had spent her early years in the Sahara Desert under the shadow of the Sphinx and would move to France to become a stage actress, even though Theta had never been to Paris or Egypt. And they also said that she was the Parisian daughter of Arabian and French artists. And the name Theta Bara is an anagram for Arab death. 
was made popular at that time to promote an actress as mysterious and elusive with an exotic background. At the time of her fame, she was making $40,000 per week for her film's performances. She was one of the most famous movie stars at the time, ranking only behind Charlie Chaplin and Mary Pickford in popularity. Brands even cashed in on Theta's fame. There was compact mirrors, you know, makeup tutorials, kind of what some YouTubers do today and stuff. But then there was also a sandwich recipe for Theta Vera. And on top of that, there was even a song that was where a good girl goes bad after watching one of Theta's movies. And it's called Since Sarah Saw Theta Vera by Harry Jintz, I think, and Alex Garber. I'm sorry if I butchered those names. But um, you can also find the, I actually found the song on YouTube. But yeah, check out the song. In a number of her films, she would wear risque costumes that would leave little to the imagination. Later, such outfits would be banned from Hollywood films. After the production code started in 1930 and was more strongly enforced in 1934. The rise of Hollywood as the center of the American film industry would force Theta and her family to move to Los Angeles to film Cleopatra, which became one of her biggest hits. The film reportedly cost $500,000 to make, making it the most expensive production at that time. Big chunks of that money would go to Theta's costumes, which would be more revealing than the last. And there was reportedly 50 costume changes for Theta's character, which, which was a record at that time and was only beaten by Elizabeth Taylor's Cleopatra in 1963 with 65 costumes. Press release reported that one single tent interior cost $50,000 in furnishings. One example of the excess Theta Vera actually reported was that a famous psychic perfumist uh, created a scent to created a scent for her to wear on set made from a 2000 year old formula. The fragrance was supposedly so strong it would not be strange if you could detect it on the screen. The film would also star Fritz Lieberman as Caesar and Thurston Hall as Mark Antony. And there were also over 2,000 extras for the film. Set pieces would include a full-size replica of the Sphinx and pyramids with a canal. The film would also include a heavily enough dose of H. Ryder Haggard's novel of the same name that he sued Fox and won 5,000 pounds. The film also included portrayals of Feast of Isis, the mm. chariot races, and a naval battle of Actium. The latter had ships being set on fire as extras jumped off into the sea. The movie Cleopatra would smash box office records and would also be selling out into the next year. So I feel like that's pretty good for a film like back in those days. The film Cleopatra was even popular enough to even have a parody made of it called Cleopatsy in 1918. It was a rodent film featuring a popular comedy character named Toto. And no, not this Toto. Sadly though, like many of Theta Bear's films, this film was destroyed in two fires. The first original copy was lost in Little Ferry, New Jersey fire of 1937. And the second last copy was in 1919, play an Irish woman in Kathleen Mavornin. <laughs> Please forgive me for the butchering of the names, but uh, for but she would experience strong backlash from Irish immigrants for this film. At the time, Barra was Fox Studios' biggest star from 1915 to 1919, but during this time she was getting tired of being typecast as the vamp so she would allow her five-year contract with fox to expire in 1919. her final fox film would be the lure of ambition in 1919. 
Then in 1920, she would turn briefly to the stage, appearing on Broadway in The Blue Flame. Bear's name would draw huge crowds to the theater, but unfortunately she was savaged by the critics. In 1921, Theta would marry British-born American director Charles Braben. This would be her only marriage, but they would have no children. And she would not make another film until 1925 in The Unchastened Woman for Chadwick Pictures. She would retire in 1926 after making one more film called Madame Mystery, where she parodied her vamp image. 1949, producer Buddy De Silva and Columbia Pictures expressed interest in making a film about Barra's life, and it was to star Betty Hutton, but unfortunately the production never materialized. Before her death, she gave her costumes that she wore during A Fool There Was, Cleopatra, and others to the young daughter of her neighbors. And then on April 7th, 1955, after a lengthy stay at the California Lutheran Hospital in LA, Vera died of stomach cancer. She was survived by her husband, her mother, and her younger sister, Lori. She was interred as Theta Vera Braben in Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Glendale, California. In 1960, Barrow would receive a motion picture star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Theta made more than 40 films between 1914 and 1926, but unfortunately only six films still exist. Those films are The Stain in 1914, A Fool There Was in 1915, East Lynn in 1916, The Unchastened Woman in 1925, and two short comedies for Hal Roach. Theta never did appear in a sound film. She is most famous for having a higher percentage of lost films than any other actor or actress in a Hollywood star walk of fame. On a side note, Marilyn Monroe even dressed up as Theta Barra in Cleopatra. But that is the life of Theta Barra. I hope you guys really enjoyed this film. I enjoyed uh, reading about her, listening to podcasts about her. So I hope you guys will check out more of her story. Maybe check out a few of the films that still survive. But yeah, let me know down below what you thought about this video. And I will see you guys next week for our Titanic person. Hope to see you guys then. Bye.